Hi everybody, this is uh, Mrs. T's Chem Talk for Physical Behavior of Matter. This is going to be the first video out of three for this topic. Um, and this one is going to cover matter, phases, and phase changes. Uh, so for those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm sorry, so this is the Physical Behavior of Matter uh, video, again, Mrs. T's Chem Talk, and for those of you who don't know me, I'm Mrs. T, I'm a chemistry teacher at Calhoun High School in, um, in Merrick, New York. So the first thing that we want to talk about is that matter is divided into two main categories, and the two main categories are going to be substances and mixtures. So everything in nature, everything that's considered matter is either considered a substance or a mixture. Substances are going to be either elements or compounds, and mixtures can either be evenly mixed, which would be called homogeneous mixtures, or um, uneven. And again, remember, homogeneous mixtures are going to be the same throughout, whereas heterogeneous mixtures are going to have layers or clumps. Moving forward, if we wanted to do molecular level diagrams of elements, compounds, and mixtures, remember that elements can either be monatomic or diatomic. And for a diatomic element, we're going to see groups of two. This would be like our Brinkelhoffs, like for example, Br2, I2, N2, Cl2, H2, O2, or F2. Whereas a monatomic element might be something um, like helium. All of our group 18 um, elements give us monatomic gases. Remember that a compound has to have at least two different types of atoms connected, and they're going to be connected in the same ratio and the same way every time. So this would be an uh, example of a compound that had two elements per molecule whereas you can also change the ratio, which would change which compound you have. So this would be an example of a different compound that uses, whereas in this one we have a one-to-one -one ratio. And mixtures, we can either have a mixture of elements with compounds, have a mixture of elements with elements, we can have a mixture of compounds with compounds, but as long as you see at least two different types of molecules, like this is a type of molecule and this is a type of molecule, as long as you see at least two different types, you have a mixture. Now this mixture would be considered a homogeneous mixture because it's evenly mixed, whereas if we saw something with layers or clumps where all of the same kind was in the same um, was in the same spot with the same section and all of the other kind was in a different section this mixture down here would be considered a heterogeneous mixture because it's layered. When we're talking about methods of separating mixtures we have a couple of different methods. We have magnetic separation where we can separate usually solid mixtures of iron mixed in sand or iron mixed in some other solid and the magnet will pull out only um, only the iron, leaving the other component behind. We have distillation, which remember when we're using distillation, we're separating liquids with different boiling points. So we put our mixture in here. We heat it up until we have until we boil the first uh, substance that has the lowest boiling point. That substance is forced up by pressure into this gas tube and then is cooled outside of this tube in what's called the condenser. And we collect the what's called the distillate over here. We want to be very careful to keep the temperature here controlled so that we're only boiling one substance at a time. Once that first substance is done boiling, we're going to remove this beaker and replace it with a clean beaker in order to um, try to boil off the next component of the mixture. We also have another method of separation called filtration, and filtration is going to uh, separate a liquid from an insoluble solid, so there has to be a solid within a liquid to use filtration, and anything that's not dissolved will stay behind on the filter paper. Anything that is dissolved will go right through. So in our experiment, uh, what we did, we had our, oops, sorry about that, we had our solid, 
we had our solid in water that had salt dissolved in it. So the solid stayed behind here and the salt and the water went through because the salt was dissolved. Anything that's dissolved in the liquid will go through the filter paper along with the liquid. So another method of separation of mixtures is going to be chromatography. We did chromatography that looked just like this. This is called radial chromatography, but we're separating the pigments. And the pigment that is most soluble in the liquid that you use goes further. The pigment that is least soluble stays closest to where it started. And also any pigment that has more attraction for the paper than the solvent will not go as far. We also have a centrifuge, which spins mixtures at high speed and is going to separate different um, solids and liquids out based on their density. So those were our methods of separation. The next thing that we have is our phases of matter. And when we're talking about our phases of matter, we have, um, for solids, we have a definite shape, we have a definite volume, and a crystalline structure, and low entropy. So this is actually supposed to say... Um, solid on here. So for solids we have a definite shape, definite volume, crystalline structure, and we're going to have low entropy. We're also going to have the strongest attraction between particles for solids. When we draw a solid we're going to, oh there we go, there's my word solid. When we draw a solid we're going to draw the particles extremely close together and in a definite pattern. So you're going to see a repeating pattern. We call this pattern a crystalline structure and that's how our solids are going to be uh, represented. We talk about liquids. We're talking about substances that have no definite shape because they'll take the shape of the container but they do have a definite volume. Um, the shape, if you have a round container, the liquid will form a round shape. If you have a square container, the liquid will, uh, will form a square shape and so on. And if we wanted to draw a liquid, we're still, sorry about that, we're still going to draw the liquid kind of close together, but now instead of them being close together and in a regular pattern, they're close together and a little bit less organized. So this is how we would do a molecular level diagram for a liquid. When we talk about gases, remember that our gases are going to be the ones that have no definite shape and no definite volume, which means that they take the shape and completely fill any container that they're put into. So for a gas, we also have the highest entropy. For a gas, we're going to have the least organization of, um, of all the phases, and we're also going to have weak particles of a gas. So if we want to draw a molecular level diagram of a gas, we're going to put the molecules as far apart from each other as we possibly can into all corners of the container to represent that they have a lot of space between the molecules and that they are filling the shape and the volume of the container that they're put in. When we talk about phase changes, we have endothermic phase changes that require an addition of energy. Solid to liquid is called melting, also called fusion. Liquid to gas is called boiling or vaporization. And solid to gas, skipping the liquid in between, is called sublimation. Our exothermic phase changes are going to release energy as this happens. Gas to liquid needs, is called condensation. Liquid to solid is called freezing or solidification, and gas to solid is called deposition, although this one's not usually, I haven't seen this one on the Regents exam, so this is just a fun fact here. Uh, this is the end of the first physical behavior of matter um, review video. The next one, video two of three, will be on energy and temperature, so I encourage you to watch that one next. Uh, if you are one of my students, hopefully if you have any questions, you can ask me in class or you can come to extra help. And if not, uh, if you're not one of my students, you can look on my YouTube channel for other Mrs. T Chem Talk videos to get some more help and some more information. Have a good day.